Hi there, welcome to making a first person controller and doing it the right way. So we're just going to get fire straight into this. I've got a completely blank empty project. I'm using 2018.3 uh, just now, so hopefully it's, it's, uh, it's all good. Um, what we're going to do is just make ourselves a little bit of a ground to stand on. So just go to game object, 3D object, cube, and uh, just biff the scale up to 50 for the X and the Z so that we've got a, somewhere to stand on. If you're really interested, you can add some more cubes in so that you know what you're doing. But um, we're just going to go from this. So um, on the left-hand side, we're going to make ourselves, first of all, an empty game object. The reason we're doing this is because um, with the empty game object, we give this all the behaviors and scripts so that we can swap out any mesh that we want so that we can uh, add in a player controller or, sorry, a player character or something else in there. I'm um, just going to change the name of this empty game object to player and just make sure it's in the center of my world. So I may just uh, raise it just up a little bit so it's off the ground. Um, now we, this player, we're going to add a child to it. So um, we're going to add the, the thing that we see. So if you right click on player, say 3D object and change that to capsule, then you can actually see what's here. Now, this is uh, a bit of a trick. Just be really careful that when you want to move something, you're moving the top level player. If you accidentally move this, uh, the capsule, it moves relative to the player. So you still, you can't really see much of a difference, but you'll see that the capsule is actually two units up, um, but the player is uh, 2.83. So make sure the capsule is zeroed out um, and that it's the player that moves. Um, so that way you're able to, uh, to to swap that out and it doesn't cause any weird things with collisions. So um, now that we've done that, we're going to click on the player and just add in some of the, the, th the components that we need. So um, first of all, we're going to need to go into physics and choose the character controller. Uh, this is the thing that we're going to hook into with code to make it work. Um, the, we're going to build this up nice and slow, so we're going to start off just with something real simple and then and build in the, the camera and other things as well. So um, if we were to play this, we wouldn't really have anything right now. Um, because the character controller on its own doesn't really do anything until we tell it to move, it won't move. So if you play this game, um, you won't have anything at all. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, this main camera as well um, is not the best so we're going to use the main camera and just drag it straight on to player as well so we have the player and the main camera with the main camera selected make sure that its position is where you want it to be so i'm just going to make its position zero 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 and then um just zoom in a touch but i'll just move up so it's approximately the head so um on my one it's zero point so let's say zero point seven five sounds about right and now we're going to add the script to give it all the behavior. So make sure you got the player selected. And uh, we're just going to add a component to that. So I'm going to click Add Component and scroll right down to the bottom and see New Script. And we're just going to call this um, Player. So save names. That makes it nice and easy. Call this Player. And uh, just double click this to open up. And I'm going to be using Visual Studio for this. And just while this loads up, we'll just pause. So Visual Studio's uh, fired up now. We're just going to get started into the coding. So um, hang on just a second. Let's make this a bit bigger so we can see. So um, first of all, we need a, a handle to our character controller. So um, I'm just going to create a variable called character controller. And for uh, briefness, I'm just going to call it CC. And then instead of start, I'm going to make it equal to that component. Um, so I just use the uh, get component character controller and um, semicolon to finish. So this is going to get us to CC right here. So the character controller component that's attached to the player now um, is going to be referenced as CC. Um, and we're going to be able to access all of the cool things like CC.move and CC.simpleMove um, just to be able to move around with it. So um, if we start with the very basics, um, what we're going to do is just create a floating point variable for the x input. So we're going to use the horizontal and vertical axis. Um, so I'm just going to make a little temporary variable called x input of type float. I'm going to make it equal to the input of the um, axis. So I'm going to say get axis. And I'm going to use horizontal. I always have trouble spelling it. Make sure that's a capital H. Um, and that will return a value for the um, 
the right and left arrow keys um, and we're going to get the Y input as well. So I'm going to call it, actually I'm going to call it Z input because um, we're going to actually apply it to the Z axis, the forward and back axis of the character controller. So I'm just going to say input dot get axis just like we did last time and this time it's vertical with a capital V. Um, so we've got the X and the Z and now just for fun we're going to move the character around. So we've got the character controller component so it's called CC so I'm going to go CC dot move and we're going to move it um, in a vector 3. So um, the easiest way just for now is we're just going to make a new vector 3 inside of this and uh, give it the values that we need. So we're going to say X input for the X value, nothing for the Y value and Z input for the Z value and close that. And if we save this and go back into Unity, it should rebuild and we should be able to move okay. around. So um, once it's compiled, um, when you hit play and you move the right and left uh, and forward and back, you can already move around. All right, let's refine this just a little bit. So we're going to make this a little bit um, frame independent. It doesn't matter what frame speed that you're running at. It will still move at the same the same speed. And you've probably seen this from the tutorial. So I'm um, just quickly jumping back to uh, this. Um, to make this frame independent, you need to multiply this vector, this whole vector, by time dot delta time. So we're just going to biff that in here. So time. So notice it's outside of the bracket. So after the vector has been made, we multiply it by time dot delta time. We could do every single one of the the three inputs and multiply each of those by time dot delta time, but this just saves a bit of uh, typing. So um, the whole vector is multiplied by time dot delta time. Um, if you uh, run this, you'll see that it moves very very slow because what we're talking about now is a unit between one and minus one. Um, so it's actually one unit per second, so one meter per second, which is really slow. So um, to make that a bit better, I'll just while I'm here, I'm just going to create a public variable and call it speed. Uh, make it a floating point variable, and uh, we're going to call it movement speed or just speed for now. And if we make this something useful like ten, um, then we can also multiply this vector by time dot delta time and by speed, and that will um, make that seem a little bit faster. Um, if we quickly just check that this works, uh, it's always a good idea to make sure that it does work as expected. You'll see that when it's compiled and you run the, the code, the right, left, forward and back should work at a reasonable rate and uh, it won't matter what computer you are on, you'll still be able to uh, run at this speed. Um, so next step would be to add in the gravity. So um, quickly we'll just add in the variables that we're going to need for this. So um, I haven't done a lot of comments yet, but it's a good idea to put some code comments in as you go, uh, just to make sure that you're keeping in track of what everything is if you look back at this later on. So um, I'm just going to say gravity stuff. Um, now for the gravity stuff, what we're going to do is we're going to create a global variable up here that tracks the y speed. So I'm just going to call this, uh, sorry, make it a floating point variable and call it y speed. Um, that's going to change um, as we uh, as it goes up and down based on the gravity. Um, I also need um, a gravity variable, so I'm just going to um, leave it not as public right now. Um, and uh, that way we can change it in code without having to go back to the editor. Um, and if we like it, we can expose this by making it public. So I'm going to make this um, minus 15 units. Um, real gravity is 10, but it seems a bit weird when you do it 10. It doesn't seem like it comes down very quick. So um, we'll keep these, we've got these two variables at the top here. Now we're going to find a way to use them. So um, if we look at this y speed variable, we can simply just put in y speed here. Um, and when we multiply the vector, we also multiply it by time dot delta time. Um, we're going to chuck in now the the basic check. Um, what we don't want to do is we don't want to be able to um, jump while we're on the ground. Um, so we're going to do a little if statement um, just to make sure that we're not on the ground. So we'll look at the character controller and use the is grounded. 
Um, that allows us to just check that we're on if we're on the ground or not. Um, then if we are hitting the key, so if we're hitting a key, the, the jump key, uh, once again we need another if statement for this, and we're going to say if input dot get button down. So this just the get button down works um, just once, so it won't happen every single frame. So we've got this get button down. So if we've if we're on the ground and if we press the jump key then we which by default is space by the way then we want to change this y speed so i'm just going to say y speed and uh, make it equal to i don't know just some random value i could make this a variable um in in up top so we can change how high we jump but for now we'll just leave it at that and um, if we're not pressing the jump key um what we should do is apply um uh, move it uh, sorry set it to zero um now this is where my experience <laughs> comes in um i found if you move if you make it exactly zero then sometimes it doesn't it doesn't check that it's grounded it doesn't actually ground um so what i found uh, to stop that happening so in other words it won't jump sometimes and it will jump other times so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it to a very small value and I'm going to make it a frame independent value. So I'm just going to say that it equals um, gravity times time dot delta time. So that just will be a small value, but it's be a small value down based on frame rate and the actual gravity you're applying. So it kind of makes sense. And um, that will mean that when even when you're on the ground, there will be a small y value that will help to ensure that the character controller is grounded. Um, the last thing we're going to do is apply the actual gravity, because right now we just go up in the air if we tried it. So um, this else goes in um, in line with the is grounded. So if you're not on the ground, in other words, you want to change the y speed. Um, you want to add on gravity times time uh, because it's an acceleration gravity times time dot dot delta time um, all this put together actually apply the movement should have us doing the jumping so I'm just going to just save it all um, go back compile it and just prove to you that it works so when we hit the play after we finished compiling we can still move uh, right, left, forward and back as before, um, just like it was. And when we hit the space bar, we shoot off into the sky and come back down. I'm just going to ch quickly um, check that everything is okay inside of my code. Y speed times time dot delta time. Okay. So um, we're going to take that out of there. The reason I did this wrong is we want these multiplied by the actual movement speed not also the amount that you're going to jump so um easiest way to do that is just put them up here instead so we're gonna do that times speed okay um sorry about that it's min minor little problem if we just save that change it we shouldn't quite have gone as high as that, so we'll just um, when we run this, we'll just have another look. Um, we should see a fairly um, consistent jump um, up and down, just like that. There you go. So there we go. Um, we're going to work on the camera in the next part.